Managing and scaling dedicated servers for your games on your own can be really hard. Unity has its own dedicated server hosting platform that will scale these servers based on the needs of your game. It is being used in games like Apex Legends, Among Us or Overcooked 2 and it has a free tier. I'm using the project that we have created in the tutorial about netcode for game objects and we'll start by setting up the project. So first we need to go to edit, project settings and in the services we need to make sure that our project is connected to a Unity ID. You can see that I already have it connected so if you don't you can just click a button to link it with Unity ID. After that we need to go to the package manager and we can just add package by name. Write com.unity.services.multiplay. This is going to download and install the only package that we need for the multiplay to work. Please note that multiplay is only going to work with Unity version 2020.3 and later. And this is all for the project setup and now we can get to the coding. I will create new script for the multiplay manager and attach it to empty object in my scene. So we have the multiplay manager object with a script attached to it and I have also created this simple UI where we will be able to import the IP and the port to the server that we want to connect. I added using Text Mesh Pro so that we can add those two references for those input fields. And then in the update and the start function, I'm just checking if the platform on which the game is running is the Linux server, because all of this logic will be running just on the server and not on the clients. And the reason that it is a Linux server, not a Windows, is because all of the dedicated servers for Unity are running on Linux. Before we can do anything with the Unity services, we need to initialize them, so I added unity services.core, and because the function is asynchronous, I made this whole start function asynchronous too, so that we can await it. This just means that our game is not going to freeze when we call this function. The key thing that you can't forget to set on the Linux server is the target frame rate. On Windows, the frame rate is automatically locked to, I think, 60 frames per second, but on the Linux server it is unlimited. If we wouldn't set the target frame rate, our server would probably crash because it would be trying to run the game at like 10,000 frames per second. Then we can actually use the multiplay service, so I needed to add unity services.multiplay, and from the multiplay service we can access the server config. The server config is holding some important information about the server, such as its ID, location ID, the port and the IP address. Then we need to check if the server is up and running, so we are checking if the allocation ID is not equal to just empty string. If this is true, then we can actually call some of the functions in the network manager that will actually start the server. Because if you remember, back in Unity we have the network manager on which we have those three buttons. We can either start a host, server or a client, so in this case we will be starting just a server because the server doesn't need to see the game. It is just going to decide about what should happen. So here I am accessing the network manager. For this I needed to add unity.netcode and unity netcode transports.utp and then we can just start the server as usual. But the server also needs some additional data. So for this we need to access the unity transport component which is on the same object as where we have the network manager. So on the unity transport we can call the function setConnectionData into which we need to pass in the IPv4 address, which the default one is just 0, 0, 0. We need to pass in the port, which we can take from the server config, and we also need to pass in the listen address. But because on the start of the game we may need to give some time to the server to load in some assets, and only then we want the players to be able to join, and after that, when we start the game, we may not want the players to be able to join a game that is already being played, so for this we can ready and also unready the server like this. So later, when we also connect multiplayer with Matchmaker, Matchmaker will know that this server is ready for connection. And there is also one additional thing that we need to do, which is to set up the iServer query handler. This will just allow us to tell the server how many players are playing the game and it will also allow us to tell the server that there is actually someone playing and that the server shouldn't shut down. We have a variable for the iServer query handler, now we need to initialize it on the start. To initialize the server query handler we again need to access the multiplayer service, then we can just call the async function on it, so we are also awaiting it and we just need to pass in few parameters such as the maximum amount of players, the name of the server and stuff like that. And then the important thing is to also update the query handler on update. 
on update, I'm checking if the server query handler is not equal to null. If this is true, then we can just pass in some information to it. So this one is not really necessary, but we are just telling it the current amount of players that are currently playing the game. And the important thing is to call the update server check on it as well. And because I don't want to be sending this information every frame, I'm just delaying it by 100 milliseconds. So for this, I needed to make the update async and needed to add system.threading.tasks. And this is really all it takes to create a server. Now let's make a function so that the player will actually be able to join a server. The part for joining the server is even simpler. We first need to access the transport, because then we again need to set the connection data, where we are inputting the IP address and the port to which we want to connect. After we set the connection data, we can just go to the network manager and call the function to start the client. And that's it. Now we can just go back to Unity and set all of these variables. I will also set the button that should join us to the server and I will just add the function, call it on the multiplayer manager and it should be the function to join to server. And now we are almost ready to build the game. So we can go to file, build settings and we will need to change one more thing in the player settings where we should go to the server, which is the middle button and we should search for dedicated server optimizations. So make sure that you have this option ticked, otherwise you may get a bit more errors on the server. And now we are finally able to build the game for the server, so you can just select the dedicated server and switch the platform. If this option is not available to you, you may need to go to your Unity Hub, go to the installs, select the version that you are currently running, click on the gear, hit add modules, and here you should be able to select that you want to install the module for the Linux dedicated server build support. With this, you should be able to switch the platform to the dedicated server and select Linux as the target platform. Don't forget to add your scenes to the build and hit build. The files that we are building now will be running only on the dedicated server, which means that you can remove all of the shaders, models, textures from it, because the server doesn't really need to see anything. Here we have it, and now we just need to set up multiplay in the Unity dashboard. Go to your internet browser and search for Unity dashboard. You can go to the first link, Unity Cloud, sign into your account, go to the projects, select the project for which you want to launch multiplay, go down to the services and find the game server hosting. For me it is in the active part because I have already launched it, so just find it down here and hit launch. As soon as you open it, you should see a quick setup guide, so we can just follow it, go for the first step, we are using Unity and we have linked the project, we have done all of this stuff, so we can hit finish. Now we'll need to create a build which is containing all of the files for the server and don't worry, later you can always update these files and have a newer version of the build. So we can see that right now these servers can only be running on Linux but this is no problem for us. Here we can just drop the files, so go to the folder where we have built it, select all of the files and drop them here. Next we can just specify the version name and we have successfully created the build. Next we can create a build configuration which is going to manage how the build should run. So we need to select the build, but right now we have just one. Then the game server executable, which we should find just like this. So it is called server build x86.64. Then we can select a query type, which is going to detect crashes, give us some analytics and stuff like that. But we can keep the most basic one, the SQP. And I would suggest you to also tick the server readiness, which will allow us to either set the server as ready or unready, depending on if we want the players to be able to join. And this is something that we have already written in the code in this part, when we are saying that the server is ready. Otherwise, if you would keep it disabled, the players could join in pretty much any time. Then we have some additional launch parameters, where I will also add no graphics and batch mode. Just like this, just to make sure that the server is not rendering anything, because it doesn't really need to. We can also add some configuration variables, but we don't really need any of them, so just hit finish. Then we can create a fleet, which as it is saying, is a collection of servers that host a game or application in specific regions. So for me it will be a Europe. So again, we need to select the Linux, select the build configuration, hit next. Then we can select the minimum available servers, which as it is saying you here, I would suggest you just zero. And the maximum servers, that really depends on the scale of your game, but because I don't want to run multiple servers accidentally, I will just input here one. And this is the beauty of multiplayer, that it's automatically going to add or remove servers 
based on how many servers the players need. So if currently your game is not really popular and you need, let's say, 10 servers, then multiplayer will run 10 servers. But if your game just suddenly gets really popular and you need thousands of servers, multiplayer can certainly handle it. Then we also have some additional server specifications, but we can keep it as it is. In this left panel, you can also go through all of your builds, build configurations, stuff like that. So if you would want to update the build, you can just select it, go to the files, and then hit update files, and you can either delete them or upload new ones. And now we can actually test the game. So let's go to the test allocations and create a test allocation so that we can join a server. Select the fleet, the region and the build configuration, hit next and run the test. Right now this is the only way that we can allocate a server because we haven't created any way for the users to do it in game. But in the next videos when we'll connect multiplayer with matchmaker it is all going to be automatic. Once the test allocation is created, you can see that it gives us the IP and the port. So you can either run the build of your game or you can just run it in the editor. So you can just fill in the IP, the port, and you can see that we are connected in a server where everything works as usual. We have some enemies, we can move. I can try to go to my second computer and also connect there. And unlike with the relay, the logic is now not running on one of the clients, but it is running on dedicated servers. So the connection should be a lot more stable and you should also be able to connect on the same server with many more people. You can see that hosting dedicated servers through multiplayer is quite simple. And if you are worried about the pricing, you can see that at the start you get $800 worth of credit, which is certainly enough for testing. And then here you can see the prices if you would want to buy additional CPU cores, RAM, licenses for the Linux, which is obviously free, some storage and stuff like that. In the next tutorial, we'll take a look at Matchmaker and how we can create some lobbies so that the players can just easily join new servers and don't have to bother about inputting the IP addresses, the ports, creating servers and stuff like that. I hope that this video was useful. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to tell me down in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe and I will see you in next videos. Bye! Thanks for watching this video till the end. If you are looking for a Unity, C Sharp or Bolt tutor, then I am here for you, so feel free to send me a message to my Gmail and take a look at my website for more info. I can help you with your personal projects or teach you anything about game development you would want to know. You are welcome.